So certain points after this quick presentation. Uh, it is obvious, I believe, that a great part of, of the EU's political and economic power has now uh, translated to normative power. And after the Lisbon Treaty, we have a legal framework, which is the driving force be behind the EU's pursuit uh, of the aims set in Article 21 of the TEU. Treaty provisions that I have already uh, presented dictate the export of values, human rights being one of the most important. Human rights can now be pursued as an autonomous objective by employing any instrument the EU has at its disposal. And, if, and uh, uh, an interesting point, the EU now exports to third states through international agreements, values and rules that are found in international treaties in which those third states are not contracting parties. And this is very interesting. So are there any weaknesses? There are many weaknesses and there's plenty of room for improvement. Uh, EU institutions, international monitoring bodies, NGOs have repeatedly stressed the need for a more efficient monitoring system, clearer benchmarks, indicators and timeframes for compliance adapted to each contracting party's shortcomings. This has been especially uh, a repeated request made by the European Parliament and the need to disconnect labor standards from trade benefits. Even though the indivisibility of human rights protects of human rights is a fundamental principle of the EU, uh, in the, the new generation agreements, labor the violation of labor standards and labor rights leads to, an, to a reaction from the EU only if and to the extent that this violation provides trade benefits to the violator. And, and this obviously must change. And apart from that, we have many examples of lack of consistency in the, in the exercise of the EU's foreign policy when it comes to human rights. And I will give you certain examples. Uh, we have uh, examples deriving from the accession requirements. The EU demands uh, candidate countries to sign various conventions for the protection of minorities, for example, while some of its own members have not ratified these conventions. Um, another example is the, uh, uh, the, the demands from Serbia. The EU and its member states expect Serbia to normalize its relations to, with Kosovo. And by normalize, it means usually, in, in essence, it means a de facto recognition, even though several member states have refrained from such a recognition. We also have the case of internal violators. The EU demands from uh, third states to uphold the rule of law and the protection of human rights, even though some of its own member states um, have committed violations against these, uh, these principles. Uh, a statistical fact, which is also very interesting and implies uh, an inconsistency, almost all sanctions that have been imposed so far against uh, third countries by the EU uh, is against ACP countries. So uh, poor and developing and weak in uh, economic and political power countries. And final uh, example is the Southern Neighborhood Policy. Uh, during the Arab Spring, the European Parliament has uh, issued uh, uh, resolutions criticizing the Commission and the Council for ignoring human rights violations that have been committed by the EU's Southern neighbors. Uh, 